Anna! Anna! There you are. Anna, it's already growing dark. You know how I feel about you being out at night. Grandpa, I'm fine. I was just finishing the chores around the farm. Oh, my dear. You needn't do so much. Come inside. Rest. It's fine, Grandpa. I like helping out around the house. I'm not so little anymore, you know? <sighs> yes. Quite right. Quite right. And I was thinking, well, maybe, maybe next week, instead of you, I can go sell our crops in the village? No. No. That is for me, and me alone. I'm sorry, my dear. It's just... the things that are out there. Promise me, you won't ever venture out into those woods. I... I promise. Good. Good. And when I do go, you must always remember, however near or far we may be, in our hearts, we carry our family. This is a tale that began in a number of places, as many often do. It began once with two sisters in a faraway school where children were cruel and misunderstood all the same. Today, however, it begins in a deep, dark wood where a very special girl indeed was about to begin a long and perilous journey. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Anna who lived with her grandfather in a deep, dark wood. He told her of all the evils that lurked outside the safety of their humble farm and warned her never to venture far. One night, however, the grandfather grew suddenly ill, yet he insisted Anna promise not to enter those woods. Her love for him was so strong that she could not, and at once set out on her ill-fated quest for the brave girl traveled cautiously into those woods, wary of all the stories her grandfather had told her. Careful as she was, however, a wicked old witch, filled with the most evil of intent, followed her from dark and foggy shadow. The old woman snatched the girl away, and in the darkest corner of those cursed woods, she locked her in a great tower. The witch, you see, had plans for the girl, but the girl had an unwavering determination to save her beloved grandpa. Oh, Grandpa, what have I gotten myself into? If... If only I'd have listened to you, then... No, I can't think like that. Grandpa needs me. I have to find a way to help him. That's it. I don't know how I'll do it, but no matter what, I have to find an escape. Anna. Ah! Did you say something before? Who were you talking to? Oh, uh, just talking to myself, I guess. Hmm. Well, stop it. It's weird. And come closer. I've told you a thousand times I can't hear you properly over there. So, Anna, how are you this evening? 
Is this a trick question? You never care about how I am. That's nice. Now listen carefully. The time has finally come for your experiment. Ah, uh, exercise. Yes, exercise. Exercise? See your nice red chair over there? I need you to go on and sit in it. Um, what exactly is this exercise? Just do as I say. Uh, <laughs> that is to say, come along, dear. Nothing to be afraid of. Be a good girl and sit in the chair now, hmm? <sighs> good. Very good. All right. Stay very still now, Anna. Now hop up, Anna. Quickly now. So tell me, do you feel different? Somehow different in your head, perhaps? Actually, yeah, I kind of do. I feel kind of, kind of, kind of sick and dizzy. Those lights were really intense. Oh, curse you, child. That should have brought out your powers. Um... Do you mean, like, pat my head and rub my tummy? It's pretty tricky, but I wouldn't call it a power. Your telekinesis. Show it to me. Tele what? I know you have it. I've seen it. If he has it, then you must have it. I'm sorry. I really don't know what you mean. I don't have any powers. Hmm. This may be harder than I first thought. All right, all right. Go and pick up your spoon. Uh, no, that's okay. I'm not really that hungry. No, not to eat. Pick it up, hold it out, and then think about nothing except the spoon bending. Well, come on, child. This seems rather silly, but I think the witch's patience is running out. I better just do as she says. <laughs> 